Good afternoon. I'm Pastor Travis from A Faithful Dad. Welcome. A Faithful Dad is a ministry that encourages dads and families right where they are. And what a joy to be able to do so. And our this is part of our video ministry. It's called A Faithful Dad Speaks. And this topic is based on what one of our viewers recently asked us. And a, a question, and it's a great question. It's a very timely question, and it's this. Number one, how can I feel peace in a pandemic world, right? COVID happened. There's, 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 there's division, it seems, everywhere. It seems like society is coming apart at the seams. It seems like there is no peace anywhere to be found. So right, what an audacious question, right? How can I feel peace in a pandemic world? That's the topic. And I'm going to tie it to Jesus's words. Of course, Jesus, King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I'm going to tie it to Jesus's words of John chapter 16, verse 33. He says this, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. John chapter 16, verse 33. So what does that all mean? And, and, and what's the context of this, of this specific scripture? And that's, it's, it, it brings me much joy to share that. In the red letter edition of the Bible, for those who have it, and if, if you're not familiar with it, you know, most Bibles are printed you know, white, in black ink on white paper. But in the red letter edition, whenever the Lord Jesus speaks, it's red. And it, you know, my favorite part of scripture is whenever I see that red letters coming to my heart just starts beating because I, I know Jesus is getting ready to talk. And that's just, I, he, he brings me such joy. So you will not find anywhere in the Bible, anywhere in the Bible, more red letters in a row than the five chapters of John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Straight Jesus, straight red letters. Him just talking. And, and, and what is the context of that? Well, the context of that is this is the upper room. He's in the upper room. He's preparing his disciples. He's giving them so many instructions. He's, he's giving them so much teaching. He's, he's, I mean, it, it's going to be impossible for a mortal like us to understand that. I mean, it wasn't until after he died and, and years later that, that they were able to discern. And, and who knows if we've discerned it all anyway right? That, that's how the power of God's word is, is just, it's, it's, it's a gift that keeps on giving. But there was just so much in there. It's almost like uh, locally here, there is a, there is a, a large restaurant called, I mean, it, it's an event called Shady Maple and they're closed on Sundays, but on Saturdays, it's, it, you know, they'll have thousands. I heard up to 9,000 people on the day before Mother's Day. And, and this buffet is huge huge this buffet it's almost like curvature of the earth like you, you can't even see from one end to the other I mean, it just goes and it's it's fantastic food i mean just like it's a smorgasbord beyond smorgasbords and and you there's just no way you can eat it all. every time you come out of there you're like oh my goodness <laughs> but that's what this verse is you know that, that's what this this part this this, this these, these five chapters jesus has given us this 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 beautiful amount of scripture and i'm gonna pluck one of those verses John 16, 33, to tie it into how can I feel peace in a pandemic world? Okay, so the first point, taking this, these, you know, and what I like about John 16, 33 is it's, it's one verse, but it's four sentences. And I'm gonna use those four sentences for my three points. First point is this. Number one, in this world, you will have trouble. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. Um, um, I've told you these things that in me you may have peace. Sorry. I've told you these things that in me you may have peace. So Jesus is saying, you know, he is, he is instructing his disciples what's going to come to pass. In other words, he's going to go to the cross. He's going to die. He's going to be mocked. He's going to be dead for three days. And he's going to ultimately, he's going to rise from the dead. And that is the peace, right? That's the peace that passes all understanding, knowing that no matter how bad it gets, he is always going to be there. He's always going to rise. There is no death with Christ, only life. But he said, I have told you these things that in me you may have peace. The disciples for themselves are, are they're shocked. They're, they, you know, they, Jesus has been saying, I, you know, soon you will no longer see me. I will be going away. You know, the son of man will be traded in the hands of of sinners, he will be, he will be he will be beaten, tortured. I mean, he he lays it out, and this is this is upsetting to them. And they're following their leader. There was there was such a there was such a feeling 
among many, including some of the disciples, that he was going to be a political king. He was going to be a king who was going to take over for Augustus Caesar. He was going to be, you know, he was going to be put in place. And Jesus resisted that. Jesus said to, to, to um, Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. It's not. He has a spiritual kingdom. This kingdom we're in now, this world, this, this world will pass away. So Jesus says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Jesus is specifically talking to his disciples in the context here that despite what you see happening to me, you know, going to the cross and, and it looking like the enemy and, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Essenes, that, that they've won, these teachers have won. But Jesus said, no, 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 I'm telling you, I told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You know, there's so few things we can control in this world, right? So few things. We can't control the stock market. We can't control the weather. We can't control how much hair we have on our head, the lack thereof. But the thing we can't control is to have peace in Christ because he's promised that. He's promised, you know, he's promised in me you may have peace. So, and that, and that's, that, that is, we're going to grab on to that because that is the heart of the issue, right? In Jesus, we may have peace. In the pandemic world, despite what we see going on, we can have peace. Point number two, in this world, you will have trouble. Mm. We don't like that, do we? We don't want to hear that there's going to be trouble. You know, when we follow Christ, we want it to be like the song, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Right? We, we want that bright, sunshiny day, don't we? We want that. That's what we want. You know, so I want to take Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I'm going to follow him. It's going to be zippity doo dah. You have a bright, sunshiny day. And then it's not. Right? And then it's not. What happens? Like, you know, we lose our job. Right? We lose a spouse. We lose a kid. We lose our way. Stock market goes down. Things happen. Right? That's this world. When Adam and Eve took a bite of that apple, sin came into the world. Right? And at that point, it was anybody's guess, and I say that anybody human's guess, because God already knows what is going to go down. He, he is sovereign. He sits on the throne. But in this world, Jesus says, you, you will have trouble. That's, he's not trying to be a Debbie Downer. He's talking the reality. that In this world, we will have trouble. There will be things like COVID that come about that are going to, and going to wreck our worlds. They're going to wreck our lives temporarily, right? In our own mind, in this world, you will have trouble. So we shouldn't expect, even as Christians, that we're not going to face difficult times. It is, it, it's how the world is made. We know in the end, Christ is coming and he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Man, I cannot wait to that day, but it's not here yet. At least it hasn't come yet. But that trouble we're going to have, in other words, we're going to need to get used to that. We're going to need to follow Christ through that trouble. He's not sitting up there on a cloud playing a bring, bring, you know, playing a harp and just people are yawning because it's boring to follow Christ. It's the most exciting thing in the world. Following Christ is the most is the biggest adventure there ever is or ever will be. Right? So he's saying, hey, I'm gonna walk with you through that trouble. I'm gonna be with you through the Holy Spirit that is in the heart of believers. I'm gonna walk with you through that trouble. In this world, you will have trouble. And here's the third point. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Wow. Take heart. Take heart means to be encouraged. Take heart means to, hey, if you've lost your heart, if you've lost your courage, if you've lost your stamina, if, you, if you've lost your, you know, uh, you know, almost like an Eeyore, you know, Jesus said, no, 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 take heart. Like, be encouraged. Great things are happening. And, and what he says immediately after, but take heart. I have overcome the world. He is on the cusp, Jesus, at the point in the scriptures. He is on the cusp of defeating death. He has a baptism to go through. And Jesus, it, 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 it even, it, it weighed heavily on him until it was completed. Where he, Jesus, was, was, was taken up on the cross. All the sins, past, present, and future, were put on his shoulders. And by his wounds, we are healed. So after he went through that, he rose from the dead the grave could no longer hold him. Death had no hold on him at all. So when we take heart, we take heart in what Jesus has done and is doing, right? We have eternal life just by believing in what he has done. That's the faith we have. That's the promise we have, eternal life. I, you know, Christmas is great in getting presents and birthdays and anniversaries like I just celebrated with my bride. But nothing, nothing compares to the gift of eternal life with Jesus Christ. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So how, in relating that to the pandemic world, feeling peace, 
we can take heart. We can be encouraged. We can renew our spirits knowing that as bad as it gets on earth, as bad as this pandemic gets, as bad as election results get, as bad as injustice gets in our world, and it gets really bad, God's going to overcome it. God is going to take care of all of it. And this is not a Pollyannish hope. This is truth as truth can be. Take heart. I have overcome the world. I have overcome COVID-19. I have overcome racism. I have overcome injustice. I have overcome poverty. I have overcome, insert here, Jesus has overcome it. Well, then we're asking, well, where is it now? Not yet, but coming. And it's a process. And in that process, walking with Jesus, we can feel that peace that passes all understanding regardless of what happens to us, regardless what the world does. Jesus has overcome the world. And that is just the, the news of all news. John chapter 16, verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. John chapter 16, verse 33. Let's pray. Father God, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, we're asking the question, how can we feel peace in a pandemic world? And the answer is, we can find that peace alone in you. Lord, what a gift it is to serve you. What a gift it is to know that you've overcome the world. What a gift it is to be a child of the King. Jesus, in your name we pray, amen. And I didn't issue the challenge, but the challenge is this. Trust Jesus because he's overcome the world. In your name we pray. Amen. See you next time.